an eGPU status update with the RX Vega 64 and the latest macOS High Sierra beta. The Mantis Venus, which is this eGPU box that I'm demonstrating right here, is an excellent external graphics enclosure. It has all sorts of bells and whistles. It has, of course, five USB ports, an ethernet connection, and it provides up to 87 watts of power to your MacBook. So not only does the Mantis Venus look good in space gray, but it's extremely functional and practical because along with being an external graphics enclosure, it also works as a dock. That means you can access all of your USB peripherals and ethernet via a single Thunderbolt 3 connection. Inside the enclosure, you'll find the PCIe slot and a 550 watt power supply. There's also this board here, which connects to USB and it features a SATA connection, allowing you to mount a 2.5 inch SATA drive in the rear, which is great. So you can house all your games and content here for easy access. And then you have two six plus two pin power connectors. And that's the Mantis Venus in a nutshell. Pretty awesome enclosure. It's not big enough to house some of the larger cards, but for the RX Vega 64, for instance, which is a blower style card, it works perfectly fine. So on the Vega 64, you have three display port connections and an HDMI connection. And on top, you'll find the power connections. So here it is, the RX Vega 64, very good looking card, and it fits well within the Mantis Venus with room to spare, I might add. Okay, so we're gonna connect this to my 2017 13 inch MacBook Pro. This is the entry level model uh, that has no discrete GPU, it's integrated graphics. So we have the DisplayPort connection, we have the power connection, and then we have, of course, the Thunderbolt 3 connection. We're just gonna plug it in like that. And Mac OS High Sierra Beta recognizes the external GPU and asks you to log out to begin using it. But before we do that, let's open up the external drive. This is the SATA drive that we have mounted inside the Mantis Venus. And you can see I have my games housed here. So with one Thunderbolt 3 connection, not only do I have all the extra power provided by the external GPU, but I also have access to all of my games stored on that SATA drive enclosed inside. So I logged out and logged back in and now the external monitor is being driven by the external GPU. So on the Heaven benchmark, I have quality set to ultra, tessellation set to normal, and anti-aliasing enabled. And that results in a very playable frame rate. In fact, it averages about 63 frames per second with these settings. Now one downside to using the Vega 64 with the latest Mac OS beta is that the fans on the card run at full speed constantly. It doesn't matter what you do. And one reason for that is because the Vega 64 just isn't officially supported yet. But of course, for testing purposes, I can deal with the fans running at full speed. Now we're gonna try out Rocket League. I have settings set to max, 1080p, and you can see frame rate hovers around 60 frames per second, which is pretty good considering how anemic the 2017 MacBook Pro is. And to prove this, I'm going to disconnect the external GPU and run those benchmarks again. This is the Heaven benchmark. You can see I'm getting around 15 frames per second right here. Terrible performance using the integrated graphics, the Intel Iris Plus 640. And the same story with Rocket League. You're getting about 23 frames per second on a good day with that 2017 13 inch entry level MacBook Pro. Okay, so let's chart out the performance. You can see the Iris Plus compared to the 580 and the Vega 64. And the Vega 64 performs pretty well considering that drivers aren't there yet. So what do you guys think? In an upcoming video, I'm gonna try out the HTC Vive with the 13 inch MacBook Pro using the eGPU. If you wanna see this, leave me a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.